What about other parasites? There's several others we didn't talk about. Coccidia. Coccidia was my nemesis for a while until we decided we can't get rid of it. Let's just manage it. Let's get them down. Now, early on in my career, we used Coxie Garden Coxie Curve. I use one cup for 10 pounds, and then I have it after it's been on board for 30 days. Now, why do I do that? We started doing that because the cochlamate. And some people will use cord. Cord works very good. The amphoria works very good, too. But my problem with cord is if you ever taste it, it tastes terrible. And to get that dose high enough, you've got to dose it. Because if you get it high enough in the water, you usually will back off water. I don't want to do that. So then what do we do? We put it with raspberry extract, or they love cranberry. By the way, if you're trying to get puppies to drink, my new big, my new big tip is one cup per gallon of cranberry juice. I had a breeder tell me that, and I tried it. It worked. You, know, you add a little cranberry juice, and they seem to like it. Uh, but Coxie Garden, the food, you got to feed it anyway. It sticks to the high-fat puppy food. We just mix it in the top half of the bag. If I've been finding Coxie, I put it through the whole kennel. For 30 days. Most parasites have a 21 to 28 day life cycle. So for 30 days, when I get through the whole life cycle, I beat the number of toxicity I'm dealing with, I rest it, and then I put it in the puppy food, don't take it out. I mean, it's very inexpensive. Now, we moved totally away from that to Marquee in the late 90s and uh, 2000s. And we were just using Marquee, which is Panagerial. And it works very, very well. You only have to do it once a week. It's expensive. Well, per dose, it's not so bad because you're only using it once or twice. The uh, problem I see with Marquee uh, using it is it does cause dry eyes in week two, four, six, and eight. So don't restart that before six weeks. You know, when we first came out using this, we were recommending you do it right with your deworm in two, four, six, and eight. We start getting ulcers from pugs and schism puppies and peak puppies, all the Popeye dogs. They don't blink well anyway. So if we decrease their fear production, we end up with the dry eyes and ulcers to the eyes. So don't start before six weeks. Albon, still good. Some resistance is being seen. So we used it for a long time. We've poured it down dogs since the, or the, in, the, in the 70s. So we deserve to get some resistance. And sulfatrima. I really like sulfatrima. I keep one antibiotic on hand for my adult dogs besides long acting penicillin and sulfatrima. Why? It's once a day. So if you've got a respiratory, I can use it once a day. If I've got a GI problem, I can use it once a day, and it will get coccidia, and it will get E. coli, and it will get salmonella. So I always like sulfur prime. The second thing you've got to watch for is nothing goes in a bit during that first 30 days of pregnancy, especially. Between the 25th and the 30th day of pregnancy, metro and sulfur will, and especially metro, flagrant, will increase your cleft palate. If you have bulldogs, especially. So don't put sulfurs in them in the first 30 days. Can I answer your question? SMZ. Albon and SMZ, same thing. Uh, sulfur trimeth, no. Uh, sulfur trimeth, there's bird biotic. I don't like the fact that you have to buy bird biotic. Tribrisin is the original name. It's an Audi generic. When it was under Tribrisin, you know, we could buy a bottle, uh, which we would put in for a large dog, it cost us about $250. And then, oh, what is the 960s? Do you guys remember? The 960 sulfur trimer, I think they're around 30 or 40 bucks. So they really come down since they're out in generic. But it's once a day. That's the important thing. You know, in my kennels, I, wanna, I want you to spend all your time. I don't want you to spend your time deworming and doing all that. I want you to spend time getting them bred and raising pups. That's what we love. That's what we need to do. That's what makes us fun. So that's how I manage the coxie. In my own personal family's kennel, we, we just do coxie garden. We don't do anything else except marquee when we ship. And for a week after he leaves, he's got toxicity of production while he's stressed. Tapeworms. Nemesis. Tapeworms. I get a lot of calls this year because fleas were back. Tapeworms are all about the intermediate host. If they don't eat the intermediate host, they don't get tapeworms. So if you have trouble with fleas, get the implant for next year. You know, up to about now in, uh, in this area, fleas have been laying eggs to winter oak. You can freeze those things. They've frozen for five years and thawed them out and hatched. So you can't kill them in the cold. They just get inactive. So tapeworms are a major issue. These little things, segments are in the stool. If it's in the stool, it's probably tapeworms unless it looks like spaghetti. If you see roundworms in the stool, it traveled 30 feet down and then it came out. You got a lot of roundworms because they should digest before they get there. So, and this, you know, it's all about the intermediate host. So if we can stop that, we can do it. 
Now, there is a lot of questions I get about treating these guys, but they're flat. They require an intermediate host. We've talked about that. Two species. One's a flea tapeworm. The other one comes from mice or rabbits. They can come from birds, too, but mostly mice and rabbits. Life cycle's pretty quick. They have to eat it. Fries are quantal, not pregnant moms. Lately, everybody's saying, can I use the pregnant mom? No. What happens when you get tapeworms? It's in the lower intestine, the last part of the colon. That's the number one area that humans and dogs, and most our human model for colitis, gets, they get cramping. So you knock all these barred heads out of the intestinal tract, and they get crampy and get cramps, and then they go into early labor. So do not give it to pregnant moms. And what tapeworms live on the waist of the neck of the dog. Now, their major problem in horses, because of where they attach around the seat bone, they cause colic. But in a dog, that's not going to be the case. Just yeah. And safeguard of panicure is safe for pregnant mamas. It'll beat them down, and that could be well for the way it's going to cause a It's not going to hurt there. But I don't want late pregnancy to send somebody into labor. Okay? And there's several products that you can use. Now, safeguard, by the way, was when they when they licensed it, was 40% effective against dipolidium. I worked for that company, and I said, uh, I, what I really wanted them to do was double the dose, because breeders all the time say, if you stay on the high side of the dose, it'll totally control your paper. It doesn't do anything else. So it works very well. People call me on puppies. I want to give them, and they're really adamant. I want to give them Project Quantum. I'd really rather they just gave safeguard a panicure, because Bendemazole is much easier on a puppy. So. And nobody's ever going to get up for that anyway. I mean, if you, you send a puppy and he's got tapeworms, that's not a major issue for a veterinarian. Not like the RD is or one of the other great types. Life's mage ear mites. Get them out of the kennel. If you got these external parasites, squeeze them from one end out to the other and quit treatment. I, if people call me and say, how do you get ear mites out of your puppies? I say, I don't. I get them out of mom. Where do you get ear mites? Got them from mom. Another reason you can't trust your mom. So, but anyway, ear mites, they get them from mom. If we get them out of the kennel, we don't have to deal with them. We do topical ivermec a lot. One cc for 20 pounds between the shoulder bones. What's wrong with the oral ivermec? Have you ever given it? If you give it, mix it with something because it tastes bad. It's done the work in both dogs and horses. You can tube a dog or tube a horse and put the oral ivermec down. works great. But a lot of them don't like it, so they gag and they spit and they throw it up. So you don't get the dose in everybody. The real key to get rid of the ear mites or the mange mites is to get it from one end out the other end, then go bring it in. Somebody new comes in, put topical ivermectin on it. You're going to breed out. You got somebody coming in to breed to your male, put topical ivermectin on your male. They kind of frown when you put it on their female, but put it on your male. And that way he can't pick it up while he's breeding his female. So just be careful when they come in, to be in good shape. I don't get dogs anymore. Farmers have an 80% increase in Parkinson's disease from any other profession. And they started looking at it. Why is it? It's all the insecticide. So if you can dip a dog, if you, if you can dip a kennel and not be soaked in insecticide, you're good. Because I've never figured out how to do it. And it got to where it made me tingle. So that's the reason I don't do any dips anymore. And I don't want my kennel people, I don't want my breeders to get out of the job and then have Parkinson's disease. So be cautious with those insecticides. They do have a side effect. No collies or shelters. You've got to go to Revolution. Frontline or something else if you got collies or shelters in your kennel. People always ask me about border collies and all that. I've always just done them. They, they're written up because somewhere in their background is collies, but I've never had issues with them. But be cautious. If you have any questions about it, just use Revolution. New dog in the kennel. This is where I always say treat them like the good Lord gave you the play. you got to vaccinate that puppy as soon as he comes in. Unless you know them, they, you know, your best friend, you know how she vaccinates, vaccinate him on the way in. I like to vaccinate him again in three weeks. I also deal with him three days' worth of manicure. I've done well at getting giardias beat down in my kennel. We should have less and less every year. I've done well at getting these parasites numbers down in my kennel. I don't want to seed anybody down in an exercise pen or whatever. So deal with them. Now, people always say isolate them in their isolation kennel. I don't know about you, but very few of us have those. If I have my isolation kennel, I put some more dogs in there. You know, that's just the way it is. But if you keep one kennel between that dog and anybody else, just an empty kennel, I can put him on the end and then empty that kennel. That's usually enough for him. It's not perfect, but it's the best we can do. And then wait the three weeks out, make sure.
sure he's healthy, get him dewormed, get him vaccinated twice, and then maybe he'll kill him. If you buy adult dogs, good luck. I get more brucellosis, more problems. If an adult, you know, sometimes I do swap males. I'm not talking now. You know, my best friend, he's, he's got females coming up. They're related to males. We swap males because we both have really good males. That's a different thing. But I'm, you're not going to sell me your best female that makes you lots of money. So why should I go somewhere and buy an adult female? There's a reason why that thing is for sale. So be cautious. And that's it. Thank you very much.